Hey everybody, it's Craig Vector here. In this video, we're going to talk about whether or not size matters when it comes to portrait lighting modifiers, and specifically on outdoor portrait lighting situations. All right, let's get started. So with an outdoor portrait lighting situation, I like to use a 36 inch or 90 centimeter modifier. And the reason for that is, I think anything over 36 inches in diameter, it can really catch the wind. So I think it's really the ideal size as far as for safety reasons, not having your modifier blow over. Now, number two, I think anything less than 36 inches can give you some harsh shadow. So if you're using a beauty dish outdoors on location, I think that shadowing is a little bit harsh, although some people may prefer that for outdoor portrait lighting situations. But me personally, I prefer a 36 inch modifier with two layers of diffusion. So for the example here in all of these shots you're seeing in this video, I use the Westcott 36 inch Rapid Box XL. Now that's a silver interior with two layers of diffusion. Now what that does, it helps to spread out that center hot spot. So you have the inner layer of diffusion and then you have your outer layer of diffusion. Now you can use just about any 36 inch modifier from different manufacturers. This just happens to be the one that I use. Now I'm using this with the Godox 8600 Pro. Now the reason I'm using that strobe is that it allows high speed sync mode, which means I can shoot at higher shutter speeds. So if I wanna bring down the ambient light to match my strobe, it makes it a lot easier for me. I'll put links below this video to the Godox 8600 Pro, as well as the Westcott modifier. So if you have any questions about outdoor portrait lighting situations, you can also post them in the comments section below. And if you're not already a subscriber, just hit that subscribe button, also hit that bell notification, and then you'll get email updates as I release my weekly videos. Now, if you found these tips helpful, give me a thumbs up. So let me just talk a little bit more about this. So I like to use the 36 inch modifier for a couple of reasons. One, like I said, because it's good in windy conditions. Two, I find that anything smaller gives you harsh shadows, but also too, it comes down to the distance of the modifier to your subject. So for a 36 inch modifier, I like to start at about three feet, which is about arm's length. So whenever I'm on a shoot, I just sort of look at where my subject is. I just place my arm out like this and that's where I'll place the modifier for starters. Now, if I want a butterfly lighting situation, I'll put it straight in front of my subject and down at 45 degrees. Now, if I don't have a boom arm, if it's too windy for that, then what I'll do is I'll place it either 45 degrees to the left or to the right, depending on the subject's good side. So we'll often say, do you have a good side? And then they may say, well, this side of my face. And then I have to decide what type of lighting situation do I want? Do I want short lighting or broad lighting? In some cases, I'll do both just to cover my bases because sometimes they both look good. So it really depends. But then I'll just position my modifier. I'll put up my arm and I'll start there at about 45 degrees of center. And then I'll look at the back of my camera and then I'll make a artistic decision of where I want that modifier placed. Now, another tip too, is to watch for the height of the catch light in someone's eye. Make sure that you don't have your modifier position too high or you'll lose that catch light. Also, don't make, make sure that it's not too low or you'll have some weird shadow. So I usually like to keep it about, say this high. So 45 degrees and down, I watch for the position of the catch light. I'm looking for 10 o'clock and two o'clock in their eye. Now also too, like I mentioned, I like the silver interior with the two layers of diffusion. And I like a round modifier because it mimics the sun in someone's eye, that catch light. So if you're using a square soft box, you get that square shape. So that's why I prefer the circular shape. All right, so thanks again for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, you can post them down below. Again, if you're not already a subscriber, click on subscribe and hit that bell notification for updates. All right, give me a thumbs up for this video if you found these tips helpful and I'll see you in the next one.